Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Spelt Pizza. That's right, don't let those amazing toppings fool you. This is all about the crust and my attempt to create a non-white flour pizza dough that isn't horrible. And while I'm no health nut, I think these days everybody agrees that reducing the amount of highly processed, refined white flour is a good idea. Except of course your grandparents. They're like, you kids these days are crazy. Our generation ate it all our lives. And other than all these major illnesses, we turned out just fine. And if you've never seen it before, this is what spelt flour looks like. Looks pretty much exactly like a light whole wheat flour, but as far as texture and taste go, it's actually pretty different. And as you'll read about on the blog, it has some great nutritional advantages. It's higher in protein and easier to digest, just to name a few. In fact, some people who can't eat regular flour because of the gluten can actually eat this without the same ill effects. So we'll cover all that stuff on the blog. But for now, what we're going to do is put one cup of that into a mixing bowl, to which we'll add our dry active yeast, followed by a little touch of honey, and then finally some very, very warm but not too hot water. And what we're doing here is like a quick little sponge step. We want to make sure our yeast is alive, and we'll give those little microorganisms a little head start before we add the rest of the ingredients. So all we need to do is mix that up and let it sit for about 20 minutes, after which it should look like this. And if it doesn't, your yeast was dead, or you killed it with too hot water. But as you can see here, my yeast colony was growing quite nicely. So at this point, we'll add the rest of the ingredients. And because we're making pizza dough, that's going to include salt, as well as a little splash of olive oil, and then, of course, the rest of the flour. And by rest, I mean like 90% of what I call for. Never add all the flour called for in a dough recipe. Hold a little bit out and see if you actually need it while you need it. But anyway, we're going to add that spelt flour in, and then I'm going to head over to the mixer, where we're going to need this for a while with our dough hook attachment. Yes, dough hook attachment. And it was right about here when I realized, hey, that's not the dough hook attachment. That's the whisk. So I stopped it and switched them out. And believe me, it was very tempting to be stubborn and leave that whisk on there because it was already dirty. But then I remembered the old saying, there are good cooks and there are stubborn cooks, but there are no good stubborn cooks. So I did the right thing, attached the dough hook, and kneaded that for about three or four minutes until I had a very soft, slightly elastic, and tacky but not sticky dough. So let me transfer that to the table so you can get a better look. Like I said, very soft and smooth, springs back a little bit to the touch. And when it comes to pizza dough, you always want to err on the side of a little too sticky versus a little too dry. Okay, this one could have been a touch wetter. All right, it was just right there. But as you'll see, it worked fine. So what we want to do is work that into a nice smooth dough ball. And we'll transfer it back into our mixing bowl. And we'll rub the surface with a little bit of olive oil so it doesn't dry out while it rises. Because that is the next step. We're going to cover that and hopefully place it in a nice, warm, draft-free place. I like to use a turned-off oven for about an hour and a half or until it's doubled in size, which is what I have right here. And at this point, we can punch it down and start making our individual pizza doughs. So let's go ahead and transfer that onto our work surface. And we'll press that down with our hands to deflate it completely. And then I'm gonna cut this in quarters. I think this recipe makes four personal size pizzas. So let's divide up our dough. And then each of those sections, you're gonna form into another little dough ball. Just like that, doesn't really matter too much. We're gonna roll it out but a round shape with a smooth top is generally a good idea. And I'm just gonna test one here. I'm gonna put the other three in the fridge and I will give instructions on the post if you do make this ahead and refrigerate it. But anyway, what we need to do before we make pizza is let these individual dough balls rest and rise for about 30 to 45 minutes at room temperature. So you can use a towel if you want. I like to cover it with a bowl. And like I said, we're gonna let that sit for at least 30 minutes or so. It's probably not gonna double in size, but it's definitely gonna puff up. And at this point, finally, we can make pizza. So let's go ahead and put a little flour down on our surface. And then we need to press, stretch, spin, or roll this into our desired thickness. So I like to use a rolling pin for this and just enough flour so it won't stick. And I'm gonna roll that out till it's about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. All right, something like this. And then once our dough is stretched and or rolled out to the desired thickness, I'm gonna lightly sprinkle one side with cornmeal because I think that's gonna give this more of the feel of a traditional pizza dough. And it's also gonna help it avoid sticking. So I guess that's optional. You are the dexter of your pizza crust texture, so it's up to you to decide what will make the most killer pizza. And once I've pressed that cornmeal in, I'm gonna transfer that into a cast iron pan, cornmeal side down, and proceed to add the toppings, which is gonna start with some pizza sauce. And I should have mentioned at the beginning, this video also includes a game-changing method for cooking pizza using one of these cast iron pans. And while this will work for any dough, I think it works particularly well with these kind of whole grain doughs. But anyway, you're gonna see that in a minute. For now, let me finish topping my pizza, and on this particular day, I went with spicy sausage, sauteed mushrooms, sauteed red onion. I'm also gonna dot it all over with some nice fresh mozzarella. 
as well as a generous dusting of real Parmesan cheese. And we'll finish up with a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. And that pizza is ready to cook. So what we'll do is we'll place that pan on medium high heat for about five or six minutes before putting it in the oven. One of the problems with homemade pizza, especially, especially using a whole grain dough, is that kind of soggy crust. You just don't get that same crisp brown bottom that you would get from that super hot professional pizzeria oven. So basically all this technique is is sort of a cheat to achieve that before it goes in the oven. And what's going to happen is that heat's going to come up through the bottom. It's going to start cooking that dough. In fact, you're going to see it sort of rise around the edge. And when we see the edges of the crust puffing and the sauce is bubbling and we take a peek and we can see that bottom is starting to brown up. At this point, it's ready to finish in a very hot oven or under the broiler until our toppings are done, which should take you less than five minutes. So I popped mine in, I pulled it out, and I was looking at one extremely gorgeous pizza. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer that to a rack to cool for just a couple minutes. And while I'm waiting, let me give you one more peek underneath and you'll be able to see that totally non-soggy crust. So yes, this video is officially how to make a spelt pizza dough, but I really do love this cast iron technique. So I let my pizza cool a few minutes, at which point we'll transfer it onto a plate. And because I used that nice, fatty, spicy Italian sausage, I decided to top mine with a little baby arugula salad. So you know, they cancel each other out. And I highly suggest you put your salad on before you cut it because it makes it so much harder and more awkward. But anyway, I cut that up and I closed my eyes and I took a bite and it was very, very pizza-like. And of course it's gonna be different than a white flour pizza, but compared to other whole grain wheat flours, this is much lighter, much more tender. The bottom and edges had a beautiful crispiness to them and the flavor is actually quite mild. And how I know this worked very well as I was eating this, I wasn't thinking about the crust. I was just enjoying a good tasting pizza. But anyway, that's it. Even if you're not into a new and exciting whole grain dough, at the very least, hopefully you try that very cool cast iron pan technique. All right, so I really do hope you give these things a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.